I've titled to this message, Wisdom of Humility. Proverbs 29, verse 23, a man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Then James 4, 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. You know, the funny thing about humility and pride is that sometimes people who exhibit these traits don't even know. Most humble people don't know that they are humble, but they know that they're doing the right thing, but they don't know what name to call it. And proud people don't even know to an extent how proud they are. During my worship this morning, as I was having a conversation with God, God told me something. Pride is a disease visible to all except to the one infected by it. It's a disease visible to all except to the one infected by it. That's what pride is. And if you're walking in pride, if you don't change course, it's going to destroy you. We've seen the justification of history many times, and we've seen it over and over again, repeating itself. We've seen tyrants rise and fall because of pride. You may think you're doing the right thing. If you don't stop, it's going to stop you. Pride manifests in excessive attention. That was what destroyed Lucifer. Lucifer was not destroyed because he stole. He was destroyed because that which God gave to him became the very thing that destroyed him. Now, there's something that God's not going to take from you, and that's your free will. So when God gives you a gift, anything that he gives to you is something that you must use to worship him. You know, the devil wants us to believe that idolatry is when you make up an idol for yourself and you begin to worship that thing. That's not what idolatry is. That's a partial definition of idolatry. Idolatry is overestimation, overglorification of oneself to the detriment of God. When you make yourself the center of your ministry, you make yourself the center of your marriage, you make yourself the center of everything, that means you are living in pride. That's what pride does. It manifests itself, magnifies itself above everything. Lucifer said, I will ascend above the stars of God. Anything that makes you think that you are better than people, that makes you think you're the best, and that everyone is inferior, it's pride. Anything that makes you think that it is only your voice, if they don't hear your voice in a meeting, you are going to walk out of that meeting, it's pride. Yeah. You come to an organization, if they don't give you an exalted position, you don't want to do anything. And even if they give you the, 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 the position, you use it to abuse people and you use it to abuse God's purpose, that's pride. You know why many churches are not doing well? People want to be pastors and, and bishops. They take the title and they ignore the task. A crown does not make a king. It is a king that gives substance to a crown. When you look for the titles rather than the task, God is going to resist you. If the devil is the one resisting you, you can stop the devil. You can resist the devil. 
If demons are the ones resisting you, you can cast them out. But if God is the one resisting you, you cannot escape him because he's going to bring you down. We cannot continue to walk in this direction. This is why the body of Christ has suffered. Do you know why the Catholic Church has continued to spread? The priests, many of them, at least they have a certain code of conduct that makes them very humble. I'm a born-again Christian and I'm proud that we are people who follow the Spirit. But we have a problem. Because it's in the born-again movement that Instead of running with the vision that God has given to you, everybody wants to be a CEO. Even when the church is just five people, I want to do my own thing. Can't you see how the devil has been able to stop you? If he can't stop you with many things, he will use your pride to stop you. Everybody wants the glory. Paul said, one planted. One waters, but God gives the increase. We cannot continue to do foolish things. There is a split and split, and it's very, very rampant in this nation. Split, split, split. One church splits. The Bible says, from where comes fighting among you? Is it not because of your selfish ambition? Is it possible for you to say it is God's will and be left behind? No. What do we have that God has not given us? And if indeed God has given us what we have, why do we have to boast about the whole thing? Instead of preaching the message, the gospel of truth, we do stupid things on social media. We post how beautiful our cars are, how beautiful this is. That's not the, the principle of John the Baptist. He said, I must decrease for God to increase. When I came to this nation and I was asking God, I said, how can we make this nation progress to the next level? How can we get so saved? Jesus told me something. He said, if I be lifted up. If I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. If you want to see your business grow, talk less about yourself, talk more about Jesus. You will see changes. If you want to see your marriage turn around, talk less about yourself, talk less about your situation, talk more about Jesus. You will see your marriage turn around. If you want to see your business turn around, make it all about God. If you want to prosper in your career, make it all about God. If you want to prosper in your organization, make it all about God. Touch two, three people say, you've talked about yourself for too long. What is it about me, 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 me? The principle of me is, him, is going to destroy you. If you can make God first in your business, if you can make him first in your life, if you can make him first in your marriage, if you can make him first, and if he comes first, then he's going to make sure that you come first in all things. He will make sure that you will be the head and not the tail. A humble person knows his self what? Therefore, he places God above himself. And he magnifies purpose. Proud people are limited in knowledge because of their arrogance. By falsely assuming that they know more than other people, they lose the opportunity of learning new things from people who know better than them. Humble people listen more and talk less, while proud people seek to dominate a conversation. By imposing their ideas on others. While seeking to be understood, they fail to understand the needs and feelings of others. I did not come here to lambast you. I'm also preaching to myself. Because sometimes you may think that you're doing the right thing, but you've derailed completely. And I don't want you to struggle with things that are freely given. 
what do you think the new birth is? The new birth simply means dying to self. How many times did you see me post my house on Facebook? Many of you don't even know where I live. Post things that glorifies God. Post things that glorifies Jesus. You know, I have a friend. Every time I try to like his post, I get all these angry tweets from people and messages. Why do you want to relate with this person? And I say, what's wrong? He says, he's a charlatan. Post nonsense. Why do you want to identify with people like these? You know, by nature, I think only God can judge people. But I really don't know how to tell some of my friends that, you know, by associating with you, the relationship is becoming less of a blessing to me. Because it's unfair that you make me lose many friends because of the stupid things you, you, you post on Facebook. It's not necessary. You see men of God who, who's got the power to, to cast out demons and and do a manner of things, they post it on Facebook. Demon expeller. Greatest demon caster. Greatest prophet has ever lived. And many times they come out with prophetic words that don't even come to pass. That's not right. The Bible says we know in parts. I seek to know. I strive to know. I am addicted to knowledge. Sometimes when I tell my secretary, let's go buy books again. Oh, Bishop, you want to buy books again? I said, knowledge is power. I seek to read. Because I assume I know nothing. Someone was asking me, what is your best message? I said, I don't have a best message. Because as soon as I leave the stage, I criticize the very message many people like. I feel that's not good enough. Maybe the only time I may preach my best message is when I'm already dead. Because I'll strive to be better than this. I'll strive to know more of him. I'll strive to be in his presence. I'll strive to understand his perfect will. I strive to know his will that I may know him better and the power of his resurrection. The day you stop learning, you begin to die. Spiritually, you begin to die. Morally, you begin to die. Keep striving. Don't stop. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. There is a joy that is set before you. Keep striving. Keep striving until you become like him. Keep striving until you talk like him. Keep striving until you behave like him. Keep striving until his glory becomes your glory. Keep striving. Touch two, three people. Tell them, keep striving. Do you want God to lift you up? Do you want to be promoted? Then it's very easy. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Don't come to church as a superstar. Come to church as a servant. My uncle was a great government official in my country. And he was also a bishop. He was one of the most humble men of God I ever saw. He said something. Something that I've always held on to. He said, humility is having the attitude of a servant with the mindset of a king. I want to use this opportunity to talk to team pastors. Please, manifest more as servants. Why am I saying this? We will have projects. None of you even bothers to come to God's house. David said, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of God. David said, I'd rather be an usher in God's house. Now you ask me about handing over a church. I'm not going to hand over a team to, to people who don't know how to serve. You can't be a pastor and a leader 
And when it's time for the dirty job, construction is going on, and I take time to make sure that I come, whether there is dust or not. That is what God expects from you. Because if they want to build your, your mansion, you go there to make sure that they build it to specification. When the tabernacle was being built, God told Moses, he said, let the ark of the tabernacle be established according to the pattern which I have shown you. If you don't go and inspect, if you don't go and make sure that it is done to specification, how can you say you love God? That's hypocrisy of the highest order. I love God. When is your business, every day you go there and you make sure that the business is properly run. I use this opportunity to say that some of this behavior is not godly. You're a leader in this church. I expect you to be humble. Humility is not coming to God and say, I love you in the presence of people. Humility is what you do for God when no one is watching you. Hallelujah. Humility is freedom from pride or arrogance and the capacity to celebrate your worth and strength without underestimating other people's value. Humility is the bedrock of the teachings of Jesus Christ, but is hardly practiced by many people who claim to follow Jesus. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And who humbles himself, we be exalted. So it, that means you have the power, you have the capacity to humble yourself or to allow God to humble you. The true test of humility is the recognition, willingness to submit to authority and respect for others who may not belong to your social class. When they scold you, would you be a David or a Saul? God gives us prophets so that prophets can tell us what no one can. This is what makes the difference. Nathan the prophet stood before David, mighty King David. And he knew that David had done something wrong. He stood before David. And he told David, knowing that David was a man who loved justice, he said there was a man who had nothing. He had only something so small. And there was this mighty man who had many things. And he took that which belonged to the poor man and he kept it, seized it for himself. David was furious. His sense of justice was aroused. Who does that? I could imagine his expression, his righteous indignation. Who does that? The prophet looked straight into his eyes. He said, you. What did David do? He didn't say, arrest him. He didn't say, arrest him. He didn't say, you, I will not submit to you. What the hell do you think you are? David said, I have sinned. Against the Lord. But what did the arrogant Saul do? Honor me before these people. Saul's ego came first before his purpose. And he lost it. When God sends us men who he has given the authority to speak into our lives, do we take their words? I'm sorry to say this. There are some people in this church that I cannot say you are that person. Because I know that the moment you say that, they are out. God said to the faithful, I'll show myself faithful. To those who are not faithful, I'm not going to show myself faithful. This is how you know whether I'm your mentor. Can I scold you? If Bishop Tony cannot correct you, then know you are just a visitor to the church. Amen. You are not a disciple. Because some of you, when they talk to you, before I say one, 388 words per second. It ought not to be so. When my mentor talks to me, I don't give excuses. If I think 
I have done things I ought not to do. Even when I think I have not done anything and my conduct has given someone that impression about me, what do I say? I'm sorry for doing it or I'm sorry for making you think this way. Because there is a way you conduct yourself, even if you are not that person, your conduct alone can give an impression that you are this person. What is it about you that makes people feel uneasy all the time? What is it about you that if they don't greet you and if they don't tell you what your itchy ear wants to hear, you don't want to talk to that person? You ain't my friend. Because they didn't like you enough. If people are not liking your content on social media, it means you're, you are doing a poor job. Do a better job. Don't throw tantrums. Hallelujah. Because if you have something people need, they'll always go for it. That's why we take time to make sure that we give people the type of things that can bless them. We learn. How can you know about people if you always guard them? You place a guard order. They can't talk, but you can talk all you can. Listen more and talk less. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 1 to 2, let every soul, say every. every. It is dangerous to run a ministry that is not under authority. It is dangerous. This is one of the reasons many pastors in this nation and some other nations run ministries on their own. And what is the end product? The pastor is a thief. He steals church money. What is the end product? The pastor commits adultery, sleeps with whoever he wants to sleep with. No one can correct him. Is this what we want? He throws tantrums. I've heard of stories of pastors who get to church. A little bit of provocation. They quit the stage. They say, I can't preach today. And one of the pastor's wife told me, he said, my husband is like that. He comes to church, it depends on the mood. That is why you have to subject yourself to authority. If I go to a nation, I don't seek to have my own pastoral movement. Because of the influence I have in this nation, many times they told me, set up your own college of bishops. Set up your own pastoral association. I said, I did not come to destroy the existing units in this nation. I came to strengthen them. Amen. When you are always seeking to have your own thing, that is a spirit of Absalom. That's not the spirit of God. But you want to defend it. I did my own thing because what they have is not good. If what they have is not good, go there and apply as a worker as one of the influencers. Tell them, I want to serve in whatever capacity you give to me. Service is a sign of humility. Hallelujah. Amen. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. This is where sometimes I disagree with Christians. Your popular candidate wins. Amen, glory be to God. Another person becomes a president, you begin to curse him. You begin to disrespect him. That's not right. Do I like the president of my country? I don't know if I like him. Because he has some policies I don't understand. But do I pray for him? Yes. Because when he succeeds, my people will have a better future. You cannot go and be insulting the people that are leading this country or your nations. It is not scriptural. We may not like what they do. 
administrative policies or political platforms. We may not like it, but we must pray for them to succeed. Because if they succeed, life is going to be better. So every day, I pray for the nations. I pray for the president of this nation. I pray for the governors. I pray for the lawmakers. I pray for the congressmen. Not because I'm going to benefit. I pray because it will benefit the nation. And if a nation is peaceful, then I can do a peaceful and prosperous ministry. Please, next time you want to resist an authority, don't call me because I'm not going to support you. Insulting men of God or insulting men in government will not change them. Pray for them. Even when Archangel Michael was contending with Satan, he didn't go to rebuke Satan. He told Satan, he said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Some of you talk about spiritual dignities you don't understand. Some are so arrogant that they came with the doctrine that they can command angels. Command an angel one day, the angel will kill you right here. Because I know that angels kill people sometimes. The time is going to come, but it's not yet time. We will judge the nations and we will judge angels. These arrogant doctrines that you practice, if that doctrine is so real, why don't you command an angel? You are so powerful. Bring an angel here. They only subject themselves to the Lord of Lords. They subject themselves to the commander of the spiritual armed forces, Jesus Christ, the conqueror, the lion of the tribe of Judah. We cannot keep taking upon ourselves powers we do not have. Pride will make you do stupid things. Please, for God's sake, let us begin to think right. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Titus 3, 1, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. The reason we subject ourselves to rulers and authority and to obey them is so that we can do good works. I pray that from this moment, the spirit of obedience is coming upon you and you will be subject to good works so that you will do the things that God has called you to do. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ephesians 5.21 Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting to one another. There was a time in the College of Bishops that I belonged to when our chairman was not set enough. He stayed here. They wanted to have a change of leadership. And the directors unanimously said, Bishop, become our chairman. I declined the offer. I said I would rather support as a board member because leadership is not a title, it's a task. And I know that to lead that organization, I'm going to devote a lot of time. And one of the things I told our chairman, I said, you're doing a great job. Please, continue. Others may not appreciate you, but I appreciate you. Leadership is not a title. If your ambition pushes you to take the title, you will destroy the task. That's why you need to appreciate all those that God has raised in the business world, in the world of politics, in the spiritual realm, in the fashion industry. We have to bless them. We have to pray for them. We need to appreciate them. Hallelujah. Inferiority or superiority complex promotes pride. Both originate from the opposite sides of the same coin and portray a troubling picture of a dysfunctional mindset. People who have a superiority complex and people who have inferiority complex are functioning from different sides of the same coin. Why? Because superiority complex says it's all about me. I. 
I. Then inferiority complex is also about self-attention. When you stand before God's presence, you have to forget yourself. You need to tell yourself, I no longer live. The life I now live is the life of Christ. The life we have is a borrowed life. The life we have must glorify Jesus. Because one day we are going to be absent from this body and we will stand before the king of kings one day we will be absent from this body that day your social media page is not going to help you your car is not going to help you the mansions you have is not going to help you the money you have is not going to help you the praise singers you surrounded yourself with we no longer help you you will stand before god and you will give an account of yourself don't do things because you want to impress me and some of you you think because of your advice, Tim grew to this extent. Oh, Bishop, just smile with the people. I'm not a politician. Don't tell me how to rule God's people. God is my shepherd. If I follow the shepherd, it is not by your strategy we got this far. Your strategy cost the church to split many times. I'm not a politician. Oh, just smile like this. Just pose for them. This is not a joke. Tell them, ministry is not a joke. What you don't know with your arrogant and ignorant mind is while you're doing all this politics, I'm there for my people. I call them when you are sleeping. 2 a.m., I'm talking to them. 3 a.m., I'm talking to them. I know the sheep. The sheep knows the shepherd. And now you are going to tell me you think is by posing and telling them sweet things. You say good things about them. Behind them, you say bad things. That's not ministry. Ask the politicians. People will play the game better than you. Be honest with the people. Be sincere with them. Be a true shepherd. And the sheep will hear your voice. And when the sheep hears your voice, they'll follow you. That is what ministry is all about. While you are busy wandering, teaching me how to run team ministries, teaching me what to do, ask yourself why the church continues to grow. If your strategy is that good, why are you not growing? They give you an assignment, you fail. And you come and begin to tell me, if the thing does not work for you, don't give me a strategy that failed you. The best strategy is to be a shepherd to God's people. Amen. My relationship with team members is not predicated on Sunday service. The Sunday service you see is just what has been finalized. Every time of the week, I'm counseling someone, I'm visiting someone, I'm talking to someone. That is what ministry is all about. It's not a show. So if you want a show, this is the wrong place. Hallelujah. People who lack humility seek admiration and validation from others and strive to be at the center of attention. They sometimes covet God's glory and provoke his wrath. Those who shine from within do not seek the spotlight. The Bible tells me in the book of James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Lift up those your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare from this moment that team members will have the spirit of humility that God will give you grace to do uncommon things in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual resistance against your destiny, I command it broken right now. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Acts 12, 22 to 24. And the people kept shouting, the voice of God. What do you think is going to happen to you when people shout like this? You know, when my ministry started growing, God told me something. Something that was so scary. He said, because of the miracles that will take place in your ministry, and because of the prophetic words, that a time is going to come. That people will seek to worship you. If you accept it, I will kill you. So I went to India with a huge crowd. 
and we were ministering and the miracles were just happening. Cripples were walking and, and something strange happened. I don't know whether this woman was a Christian or a Hindu or whatever it is. Held my leg and began to walk. Oh, if you saw the way I felt, there was this holy fear that came upon me. What are you doing? What is this? Then I remembered what God told me. Have you noticed that we don't really advertise miracles in team? Most of the time you say, Bishop, people are healed of cancer. They are healed. We have all the tapes of fantastic miracles. Did you see me put it on Facebook? Because I know what is going to happen. When you do that, people will come. And they'll think that this ordinary flesh that's going to perish is a God. We have to be very, very careful. How we seek to take God's glory. Hallelujah. I've always told people I'm not a miracle worker. God is. I don't have the power to see into the future. Only the Holy Spirit can. I don't have a healing power. Only God heals. But one thing I can do, I will not stop telling you the word of God. Because the Bible is a miracle. Because when you preach the word, signs and wonders, we follow the word. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. When your pride fails, when your arrogance perish, the word of God will still grow and multiply. You see, one thing I have learned to understand is this. No man is indispensable before God. I am just a dot in God's agenda. When I'm gone, someone greater, someone stronger, someone better will come. I know that. So it's a privilege to serve you. It is not my right. It is a privilege. Tell your neighbor, say, serving you is an honor and a privilege. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Humility is godly strength, magnified true purpose and service. Sadly, in this materialistic world of greed and vanity and pride, it is often misunderstood as stupidity or weakness. The Bible says in the book of 1 John 2.16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. James 4.16, but now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Say every boasting that glorifies self rather than God is evil. When David boasted, he didn't boast of himself. He said, you come against me with your spears and with your javelin. But I come against you. In the name of the Lord of hosts, today, I will have victory over you. That is the boast that glorifies God. The Bible says, if anyone boasts, let him boast in the Lord. If anyone glories, let him glory in the Lord. Sometimes we may say things that sound boastful, but if these things glorify God rather than self, go ahead, let no one stop you. Because you cannot magnify God's name in your boast without God manifesting his presence and power. Most godly people are humble, but not all humble people are godly. Genuine humility honors God and transforms lives. While false humility promotes personal interest to the detriment of divine objectives. Philippians 2.3 says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or concert. Say, let nothing. Because there are some people who come and they become too humble. Too much humility is also a kind of pride in disguise. 
when the humility is too obvious, know that there's an agenda. A guy that, that flies business class all the time, then during election, suddenly he takes the bicycle and, oh, come on, come on, give me a break. I saw those things in our country. The politicians who fly private jets, suddenly the thing has become so strong. They are going to market wearing sleepers then. <laughs> oh, come on. Give me a break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you, you can't do that. Humility is a lifestyle. Say humility is a lifestyle. So quit acting and be real. Hallelujah. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Did you hear that? I know I can preach a thousand and one message, but I am going to esteem you better than me. I know I may be richer than you, but I will esteem you better than me. Jesus told the disciples, if anyone desires to be great, let him be the servant of all. There was a time they said, Bishop, you are hypnotizing our people. What did you do to them? I said, I served them. The way you see a cat running after a rat, that's the instinct I get when I see people in need. I just want to serve. When there is a need, humble people will always meet that need. Tell your neighbor, say, service is getting your hands dirty. I know you spent money manicuring, legging curing, and the rest of the cure. The day you die, the worms are not going to respect that. It's going to eat up everything. So put your hands in the mud. Right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The finger you love so much. By the time you, <laughs> by the time you die, that's the first thing the, the worms are going to eat up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Use it to glorify God. Amen. Three major traits of humble people. One, humble people are thankful. They are grateful because they understand the power of salvation and God's grace of redemption. We are what we are because of God's grace. I am who I am because of the grace of God. And this is one thing that Christians miss. I grew up in a family that was strict Christians. I never drank. I never smoked. I never had girlfriends. I didn't know where I was going. So anybody that tells you that holiness is just, oh, I'm holy, no girlfriend, you will be a virgin and go to hell. <laughs> Believe me. But when I recognize God's grace, that it is not because of my abstinence, but I am what I am, I'm who I am by God's grace. My God, my life changed. The fear of death disappeared and service became my lifestyle. Some of you, you are too judgmental. If it's not your sin, it's the worst sin. When you are lying, God have mercy. But when someone is cheating, oh, you're going to hell. That is not humility. Sin is sin. Whether it's sexual or whether you're a killer, whether you are this, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So before you criticize people, look at yourself and see how you're still struggling in that area and shut up for God's sake. None of us came to this place by its merit. Among all the people, I consider myself the chief sinner, but by his grace. I can stand and preach. Amen. So before you judge people, before you write them off, be careful. How can you call unclean what God has called clean? How, how do you do that? If God says, this person is my beloved, I have redeemed him. 
And if God is not true with that person, please step aside. Because sometimes in our self-righteousness and hidden spiritual pride, you go like the Pharisee. The Pharisees did not even know they were going to hell. And a guy who was telling God, I have sinned, oh Lord. Oh, thank God I'm not like him. Thank God I'm not like him. You are going to hell and you don't even know. Your pride has blinded your eyes and you think you are going to heaven. Jesus looked at them. He said, you weren't saying, have mercy on me, me helpless sinner. is more justified than you. I know we don't have Pharisees in our midst. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not a Pharisee. I'm not a Sadducee. You know, someone said, the meaning of sad you see, the sad people you see. <laughs> we don't have that here. Hallelujah. We are all saved by God's grace. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, every sinner can become a saint. And every saint was once a sinner. Hallelujah. Praise God. Humble people are thankful. They are grateful because they understand the power of salvation and God's grace of redemption. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Now if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Pride is concerned with who is right. Humility is concerned with what is right. Talents without humility ends in great catastrophe. True humility is stained teachable regardless of how much you already know. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. It is thinking more of others. Then two, humble people live for a cause bigger than self. They know that they were purchased with a prize to fulfill destiny. Therefore, they use their lives, time, talents, and treasure to worship God. Do you use your time, talent, and treasure to worship God? Amen. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 1 Corinthians 6.17 But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Then John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. The more you decrease, the more he increases in your life. It is a balance. If you tilt towards self, you become carnal. If you tilt towards the spiritual, you become godly. That's why the Bible says, set your affections on things above. In conclusion, humble people rely on God always. Say always. always. Say always. always. Lean not on your own strength. In everything, let his thoughts be your thoughts. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Humble people rely on God always. Their abilities or emotions do not lead them. They are people of conviction who follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The problem is some people meet God when the project is already messed up. They only come to God when there is a mess. Why don't you allow God to even initiate the project? The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build, build in vain. 
unless the Lord watches over the city, those who watch, watch in vain. Most of you come to God, or some of you come to God when there is already a problem. But the truth is, He is the architect of your destiny. Take your plans to Him. He has the blueprint of your destiny. He knows. Even before the world began, he began the beginning before the beginning began and started the start before the start got started. He knew the beginning from the end and began the beginning before the beginning began. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't be a Jonah that only prayed when he was inside the belly of the fish. Before you start the journey, acknowledge him. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through your strength, through your gift, through your abilities. Well, I don't know about you. When I say I can do all things, it's because I have Christus, Christ in me, the hope of glory. When I say I can do it, it's because I know. That the one that watches over me neither sleeps nor slumber. I know that he who began this great work in my life is faithful to complete that which he started. So my confidence comes from God. My knowledge comes from God. My power comes from God. My abilities come from God. He must increase for I must decrease. Because the more he increases in my life, the more he increases his ability in me. In him you live, in him you dwell. In him you have the totality of your being. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now what are the benefits of living in humility? Proverbs 22 verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Three things. One, riches. Humility gives you the capacity to gain wealth through divine favor and promotion. Two, honor. Humility guarantees you honor in different facets of life. Three, life. Humility promotes long life, peace, and happiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is someone blessed? Amen. Is someone blessed? Amen. I want you to stand to your feet. Now as the word of God came, some of you may have felt a bit uneasy. If God is convicting you and if there is an area of your life that you need to put down, you need to say, God, I'm your child. But I just realized that, you know, sometimes we are capable of making mistakes. God can help you. God can help you. One prayer today, or just two prayer points. The first one is, God, help me to magnify you above my feelings, above my ambition. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, help me to magnify you above my feelings, above my ambitions. Then the second prayer point is this. Lord, I want you to increase in my life so that I may decrease. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift your sons and daughters before you. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Satan, you will not take advantage of this message to condemn God's people. Every feeling of condemnation in this place, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Father, for those, for your children who are in conviction, I ask that you grant them the grace. The grace to say no to pride. And to say yes to humility in the name of Jesus. I ask that you grant them the grace. To walk as servant leaders. 
that from this moment, they will no longer live self-centered lives. They will live Christ-centered lives in the name of Jesus. I also pray that in line with your word, that you give them the spirit of humility so that you can give them honor, life, and riches. Today, I invoke honor upon you in the name of Jesus. I declare life upon you in the name of Jesus. I declare riches upon you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that grace be multiplied in their lives. As they step into this week, I declare that this week shall be one week of promotion in the name of Jesus. Let it be one week of favor in the name of Jesus. I break the power of death. I break the power of sickness. And I declare that these blessings will be upon you. You shall be blessed in the city and you shall be blessed in the province. Your generation shall be blessed. You will move from glory to glory, from power to power. Arise! Rise and shine, for God's glory is risen upon you. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you. See you next week.